So thank you and welcome to the Office of Research and Sponsor Programs Open Ideas Exchange on the National Science Foundation. On today's agenda, I'm going to give you an overview of NSF. I will go over um, how NSF versus NIH, the differences. I will discuss um, in particular three funding opportunities, which I believe connect really well with Neomed. So connecting to societal challenges, the Technology Innovation and Partnerships Directorate, as well as the major research in instrumentation. And then I will answer questions and we will open up the floor for um, any pre and post award questions that anyone has. So the National Science Foundation is an independent federal agency that was created by Congress in 1950 with the goal to promote the pro progress of science, to advance the national health, prosperity and welfare and to secure the national defense. In essence, NSF supports basic research and people and they have an annual budget of approximately $8.8 .8 billion. And this was fiscal year 2022. And they fund approximately 25% of federally funded basic research at US colleges and universities. And they provide support for not just basic research, but also high risk, high payoff ideas, cutting edge pioneering and novel concepts, uh, which will revolutionize science. So basically NSF is not afraid to take risks and take chances in funding their research. So what do they do and how do they work? Well, they support scientists, engineers, and educators through grant support to education institutions. They provide funds for facilities and equipment using a bottom-up approach to research support, funding solicitations in three categories, which include their program descriptions, their program announcements, and program solicitations. And their proposals are independently reviewed by at least three reviewers through the merit review process. So what happens is the NSF program officer receives the reviews and makes an award or decline recommendation to the division director. If the pro proposals de decline, the PI will receive the reviews and the explanation. And if not satisfied, they may request additional information from the program officer or division director. And if approved, that recommendation goes forward for award processing. The research areas of NSF can be um, pulled into uh, seven broader um, categories or areas, seven directorates. So we have our biological sciences, we have the computer and information science and engineering, otherwise known as CISC, engineering, geosciences, mathematical and physical sciences, social behavioral and economic, economic sciences, and the education and human resources. So how does NSF and um, NIH differ? Well, NSF is really looking to fund basic research that adds to a body of knowledge, whereas NIH is your health-related exploration and applications of fundamental biomedical research. In terms of budgeting, um, NSF is going to use the same uniform budget, um, a detailed budget, um, providing for salary effort limitations without a cap. So for NSF proposals, generally it's limited to um, two, two months. Um, and there are budget ceilings, which do include indirect costs. So on the NIH side, we have either a modular budget, which are, you know, um, asking for dollars um, in modules of 25,000, or our R&R &R budget format, which you would recognize mostly with, you know, the R01 submission, um, and no salary effort limitation, limitations. So, you know, potentially PIs could ask for 100% effort. However, there's a salary cap, and that current salary cap is $203,700, and their budget ceilings generally do not include indirect costs. So you're able to ask for direct costs and then your um, indirect costs do not count up against that limit. The budgets for the programs. NSF, as I said previously, is around 8.8 .8 billion, whereas the NIH is um, 45 billion. And the success rate for NSF is about 26% uh, fiscal year 21 figures. And the success rate for NIH is 19.1%. 
NSF uses either unsolicited proposals, solicit proposals, or program descriptions. And then the NEH, their language is parent announcements, uh, PAR, standard research grants. So your R01, R21, or um, small grant support through the R03. Um, the next level of difference, and I talked about this a little bit earlier, is in regards to the review process. And this may seem a little bit um, different for anyone that is more familiar with that NIH process. So for NSF, really, the program officer is really involved in that process. And for most proposals, you are going to want to um, engage with that program officer and make that phone call to that um, program officer, first and foremost, to discuss your proposal, to ask them questions and receive that guidance. And the program officers at NSF really enjoy being hands-on and working with um, faculty and developing that research. Because again, they really want to fund that basic research. They really want you to be successful in um, acquiring this funding. So that relationship is going to be really, really important. Um, and that may differ a little bit with um, NIH. And so that program officer is really extensively involved and they're going to pull together their review team and it's at least three reviewers. And then they're going, that makes up the review panel and the review panel provides those recommendations to the program officer and the program officer looks over those and they will ultimately make a recommendation to that division director of whether or not to be funded. So from proposal submission to really um, the award stage, you're working with that program officer. Um, for NIH, it's a little bit different. It's going to be a um, first level review, and then you're going to get a second level review, um, and then both councils have to be on the same page and make those recommendations. So a little bit different process between NSF and NIH, but ultimately the same same goal. Um, you know, NSF again is going to be a little bit more hands on. So I, can I add something here? Mm -hmm. um, with NSF, you don't know who the reviewers are. You can, you can recommend a reviewer, which, which we highly recommend, but that, does, that may not, they may not select those reviewers, but they could talk to that person that you've recommended and then, um, and then have them um, give, us, give them the NSF program officer additional names. With NIH, you already know who's gonna be on the, uh, typically, you know who's on the, that study section um, ahead of time. Although you're not allowed to contact them, you do at least know who they are. And so you can get an idea of what their area of specialty is, which with NSF, you just can't. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So a li little bit different um, review process there. And then um, further into the reviews, um, the proposals are going to be rates by excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor again, through the lens of intellectual merit and broader impacts. Um, and in fact, um, you know, uh, proposals that don't include this in their project description into intellectual merit and broader impacts are, are returned with that review. Um, so really it's through that lens of intellectual merit and broad it, broader impacts that that proposal is getting reviewed. For NIH, you've got your overall impact scores, um, significant focusing on significance, investigator, innovation, approach, and environment. And then the bottom half of scored applications are not discussed. The other difference is with NSF, um, the language is used for proposals is around objectives, project description, principal investigator, PI, and co-PI. And then for NIH, it's really um, truly scientific, you know, specific aims, research strategy, principal investigator, co-investigator, or multiple PI. And NSF really does not like the interchanging of the language. Um, so, you know, if you were to take an, a proposal that you're submitting to NIH, that could potentially also um, be switched up for an NSF submission. You just have to be mindful of that language using, you know, PI, co-PI language versus, you know, PI, co-investigator, multiple PI. Um, and, and using, you know, objectives versus, you know, specific aims. Um, for NSF, there is a strong, strong, strong expectation of student involvement. Um, they really want students to be involved in research. They want you to speak to that and how you will engage and connect with students in your research and provide those opportunities for um, students. 
Um, and for NIH, it's really program announcement specific. And there is one area of um, focus that they will speak to that, and that's the R15s. And we are not currently eligible for that um, for those. Uh, so you would really have to look at the program announcement and again, including students, um, you know, if you have a plan for that, it doesn't hurt to include them, but it certainly isn't um, an expectation as it is with NSF. So um, proposal submission, NSF has moved away from fast lane. There may be um, some folks familiar with that and they are fully in research.gov. Um, so when you work with us in the office, we aren't going to, you know, with NIH, NIH you're used to a submission with grants.gov or the NIH assist. Um, and, you know, with the grants.gov, we're able to do system to system. So we upload the documents and we hit the button and it, everything gets sent over. For research.gov, we have to manually um, input the documents into the system um, and hit submit. But um, PIs are able to, you know, upload them as well. Um, so that's, you know, research.gov versus grants.gov. Another difference is going to be um, in biosketch and current and pending. Um, NSF requires a biosketch and a current and pending at time of submission. And the NSF has actually started working closely with NIH. And um, these forms have to be done through Science CV. So that is something, and um, they've worked with NIH to do, and Science CV to develop a biosketch format for NSF. And so that is different. So you can't use your NIH as of right now, you're not able to use your NIH biosketch for an NSF submission. Um, because again, the biosketch for NSF is limited to three pages. NIH, you have a five page uh, uh, limit. Um, and for NSF, we do need those current and pendings at the submission, whereas that information is done in NIH in what's called the just-in-time phase or JIT. So those again are some of the bigger high-level differences, not too scary differences, but just slight tweaks between how NSF operates and NIH. So, um, so funding opportunity, it's really, um, and this has been new where I've been getting some announcements and reading up about what NSF is trying to do and really they're trying to connect scientists and researchers to some of these societal challenges that are happening. Happening. So in the slides, um, there are linked opportunities um, that you can go in and sort of read, um, you know, what exactly these opportunities are. But under um, funding opportunities, societal challenges, they really are looking at, you know, biotechnology. So things such as vaccines, sustainability, um, food and security issues, biofuels, just you know, how are we going to meet these future societal challenges? And they're looking to fund, um, you know, the, that innovative research um, around those issues. Um, we've got emerging infectious disease research. So looking at host and pathogen biology, which I found very fascinating, um, infection and transmission dynamics. Um, and I'm sure some of this has come about as, you know, um, as a result of COVID, COVID. So, you know, seeing how can they respond to meet some of these demands and, and that are happening right now. And then life on a warming planet. So climate change, biodiversity, food production, agriculture. Um, so again, you know, societal challenges, what's going on, how can NSF um, work to meet these societal challenges? So through um, TIP, which is now an officially um, a new directorate, Technology Innovation and Partnerships, they're looking to create breakthrough technologies um, through meeting societal and economic needs. Um, anything that's leading to new high wage jobs. Um, they wanna empower Americans to participate in US research and innovation and support youth inspired research. Um, so really through TIP, looking at that transformative um, translational research. Um, and two examples of this, um, of, of funding opportunities that's through this directorate is i -Corps. Um, so that's one example, which is looking to connect technology and entrepreneurial and business communities with science. And then Xlent, which is spelled capital E, lowercase X, and then capital L, E, N, T, which is, stands for experiential learning for emerging and novel technologies. Um, and that purpose is to expand practical learning opportunities. 
Um, so again, those are um, through TIP. And then the last one, which I'm really, really excited about, um, is the major research in instrumentation, um, also known as MRI. So the, um, the Chips and Science Act of 2022, which was signed by President Biden back in um, August, um, requires the elimination of cost share on the MRI program for at least five years. Um, they really wanna look to see if the MRI program has um, not been as inclusive as it should be, if there's you know, programs that really could benefit um, from this um, funding mechanism and they haven't been able to access it because of that cost share. So they're doing um, a, a basically elimination for five years to really look at this and see. So it's a great opportunity for institutions that might've never looked at the MRI to really um, try to get some equipment that would really fuel, fuel your research. So it's all about supporting the acquisition of state-of-the-art instrumentation. Um, they wanna see an increased use of instrumentation. They do want institutions to think, how can we share this instrumentation with other institutions? So getting having involvement of, uh, of other institutions um, really helps in these submissions. Um, and they really wanna create well-equipped research facilities that contribute to um, existing environments and promote meaningful partnerships. And there are two tracks. Um, and so right now the new solicitation hasn't been approved. It's not out yet. Typically these are due around the second or third week in January, I believe. Um, so it will probably be, as soon as they posted, the deadline would probably be at least 90 days after that post date. Um, when it is announced, I'm sure we can put something up on our website if anyone would be interested in submitting to this proposal opportunity. But the request, um, there's two tracks. So one track is um, request of at least 100,000 up to a million dollars and request $4 million up to $4 million. And of course, because this is an equipment request, there wouldn't be um, any indirect cost on that. So these would all be direct costs for that instrumentation. So can I add something here? Um, there were a couple things I was thinking of. I don't remember what um, what the cost share requirements were in the past. Do you remember what that was? Was it one to one or two to one? Or? I believe it was 30%. 30%, okay. And then when we talk about um, you know collaborative proposals, it doesn't even have to be multi-institutional. If you can include, if it can be multi-departments, multiple departments in a proposal, you know, with um, confirmation uh, on use of the equipment by the faculty from multiple departments, which they kind of, um, you know, they, it requires their, their names and departments and, and how they would use it. The um, NSF is interested in that as well. Not yeah, that we, they, can't, we can't work with multiple institutions. But, yes, yes. Um, and actually, I had skipped over a note that I had wrote to really hit home and hammer. Um, NSF is really about collaborative research. Um, they're really about interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary. So as you see through these um, you know, funding opportunities, that's what they're really looking to do. Um, and, and they really want you to you know, step outside you, what you do normally and see who can you partner and work with um, to really transform this science. So they really want you to think outside the box. And I think that's why I really appreciate um, NSF um, because they they that's what they're looking for. They're looking to push um, science, you know, to the net to the next level. They're like they're really looking ahead, and they've really been, you know, ahead of the curve, um, you know, on on a lot of different things, you know, including our DMS, you know, the data management and sharing plans. They've you know five years ahead of the game. So you know that's where I really value um, NSF and see them um, as really being able to push, you know, science and really support you know, biomedical research. Um, so I, you know, I wanted to sort of bring home a final slide and hit it home in case you weren't, you know, able to make that connection. You know, so how does NSF fund biomedical research? You know, they, they fund it through devices and instruments, you know, either application and, and testing of techniques to improve performance. You know, maybe there's an equipment that, you know, is out there that is being used and you, you know, want to test this or you've got, you know, to test another technique to improve, you know, um, the health of patients, you know, and then, then of course the acquisition of equipment. 
um, computation, mathematics, algorithms. They're all about that. That's what they do. You know, they, they want to see that. They want to see you testing new methods. Um, and, and again, because they're, they're willing to take some risks on individuals, um, you know, that might be something that, you know, you go to the NSF um, to, to, for, you know, and maybe it's a, you know, smaller side grant that you're asking for, um, you know, and again, NSF is going to be smaller funding streams. Um, you know, it's not going to be a $2 million or $3 million, you know, project, you know, you might get $300,000 to do your research. Um, they do fund trials on animals and human subjects. Um, so drugs, you know, again, instrument improvement and techniques. And again, if you're testing out, you know, techniques that's going to be, you know, human subject research um, and then psychological and neuro neurological research. Um, so again, you know, they really are about interdisciplinary collaborative research um, and really looking at that basic research that is transformative. So are there any questions? I, I, I don't know if there are other questions, but I do want to add that um, uh, that while uh, while we it doesn't include the equipment and things like that, but but NSF um, funds the like the behavioral sciences um, quite a bit. They do. There's a lot of funding for psychology, um, uh, ethics, things like that that um, people might not think about, but but that they are very interested in. Yeah, yeah, they do. I mean, they. I mean, it's just you know, you, you, you really would have to go and look um, on the NSF website, you know, as a researcher um, and see what they currently fund and see if this is something that they would fund. And then the next step would be picking up the phone and calling the program officer and just having that conversation with them, letting them know what you're trying to do, talk about your research. Um, you know, NSF is very, they, they, they're very, I, I don't know, I, I'm, I may be biased about around them, but they're very, they're very easy to work with. Um, and they will be honest with you and let you know um, if it's something that is in the realm of what they would be looking to fund. Um, and they also may give you some guidance. Here's how you can improve it. Here's what you can do. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with faculty in the past that have taken some of those reviews and gone back and have been successful. I've had faculty that, you know, the program officer has wanted to fund, um, you know, has, has said, yes, I want to fund this. This is important. This is important work, but here's where you need to tweak it. Um, and then they've been successful in getting through that, um, that finish line and getting that funding to fund their research. So, you know, I think it's, you know, I'm, I, I don't want people to be afraid of NSF. I don't want people to think like, because it's lower pots of money, um, that it's not something that's in the realm of possibility. I certainly think that NSF funding um, here at Neomed is, is within the realm of, of possibility. You know, I know it's, you know, they fund 25% of federal funding at, you know, colleges and universities, um, you know, and, and so I think it's definitely a realm of possibility here at Neomed. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'm, I'm Austin Shin from Palm Science Department. <laughs> And uh, what I know about the NSF funding is, uh, previously I know one of the director of the NF NSF, uh, the computational part, but she mentioned that NSF fund, NSF fund emphasized more uh, the training with undergraduate student, with yes. the research. And then she said, Neomed is not fit for NSF funding. And then she mentioned me to prefer to uh, apply the NIH fundings, is yeah. it right? Or is there any opportunity we can uh, more focused on research together with the, the professional degree student or master's or PhD student together? How do you think about it? Yeah. We don't have yeah. undergraduate students in Neomed, right? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. that is true. So, it, you know, it really is, that's where those collaborations and the relationships external <laughs> um, gets involved because certainly, you know, maybe we're not the lead on a, on a proposal, but we're working collaboratively with, you know, with Kent State or with Youngstown State or, mm -hmm. you know, it's really thinking outside the box 
as well, because, you know, a lot of other institutions might not have those, some of the training opportunities that Neomad can provide um, Mm -hmm. as well. Okay. What about the high school kids in our Neomed, the biomedical uh, high school student? Is it fine to have any kind of the research project with high school student? Is yeah, it, I think those uh, are conversations that could, uh-huh. could certainly happen. Okay, okay. Okay, yeah, that's the concern for uh, about the NSF compared with the NIH. Right, so, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had covered that they're very they they very much want um stu- uh-huh. you know students involved. Okay, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. And then well- can I can you share that uh, presentation uh, slide with us? Yeah. Yes. For the order. Yeah. Yes, I def yeah I definitely will. And I think uh-huh. um there was a question. Uh-huh. Let me get back with the website. Um, where's my chat? There we go. Um, okay, what is the website for NSF where you could find additional info about funding opportunities? Yep, I'll include that in the chat. And what I can do is also update the slides um, mm-hmm. to have um, a website link. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Are there any other questions regarding um, NSF or funding opportunities? Oh, uh, one more thing. For NIH, the, the, there is a three terms, Jan- uh, February and June and October for the due date of the applications for the R grant. So what is the, the grant due Seasons for the NSF is it duplicated with NIH or it's different? It it can vary, so it uh-huh. really varies by um, directorates. It varies by the programs. It there are no standard um, due dates with oh, um, with okay. NSF. Yeah, yeah. You uh-huh. really have to look at the program announcements that they give. So there are no standard due dates. I know NIH is nice in that sense that there are standard due dates. You know when it's coming up, you can plan your research around these due dates, you can plan your teaching, all of that stuff. But the NSF it makes it a little bit more difficult for that. Okay, thank you very much. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Becky. Sure, so so um, if, we're, if there are no other questions, I guess we can just open the floor up to, um, if there are other questions unrelated to, um, unrelated to NSF, but I see that there's another question about NSF. I don't know if you want to jump on this one. Um, you can, do you want to take it? Um, the question was how many rounds of resubmission is allowed? There, there are no limits at NSF, are there? It, it's not, unlike NIH where you have a, a submission and then uh, a resubmission. I'm sorry, I, I have a, a, my plumber's calling. So I'm gonna let you finish answering this. <laughs> Yeah, there's no, there's really um there's really no limits for for it. You know, it really just there's some um, announcements that would say it, um, but they would let you know. But it's really um you, you could it, it's really again based on that conversation you have with the program officer. Um, you know, that's really where it all starts. Um, and they'll let you know. You know, if you should resubmit, if you shouldn't resubmit, um, they will definitely let you know. And then uh, you you give us the, the website for NSF. Uh, that's the main website of the NSF. Is oh, there any particular me... uh, website which we can find a specific P program officers uh, with the contact number, contact information? All right, let me repost. I did send the wrong link. So this is, and it's going to take you to, um, just ah. the general, and then you'll be able to do a search for yours, you know, because NSF is, it's so broad, you really have to drill down um, for yourself and really get in, dig into the website. As far as the program officer, it's going to, you again, you have to go to the correct um, directorate that you're looking at and go into that announcement that you would be looking at, you know, in okay. that specific program. Yeah, okay. uh-huh. yeah. 
Right. So it's I kind of just I as I recall, because I haven't done it in a step in a couple of years, the name of the con the contact names are at the very end of the program announcement, correct? Yes. Yes. And while you're looking that up, um, <clears throat> I did have a question that somebody had put in when they registered for this um, for this session, and but she's not here, so because I I needed to ask her something to for clarification, so um, I'll send that out and um, and maybe we'll have that as a topic coming up soon. Sounds good. So if there's no other NSF questions. Um, you know, again, we really want to be here to help assist you in um, securing your research funding. So feel free, um, you know, to email sponsored programs um, and we can sort of, you know, help you get set up in that first step, um, you know, to help you get some secure some funding um, for your research. And we will open the floor if there are any um, other pre award or just uh, general pre award or post award questions. We might have a few minutes of our time back today. I know. Well, if there are no other questions, we will give you back. Let's see if I can do math. 24 minutes of your day. So thank you again for um, coming and we look to see you uh, next month. Great. Thank you very thank you. much. Yep. You're welcome.